Hello again, college football fans. Coming at you with your week nine college football predictions. Uh, going to start off nationally. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give out a couple of upset alerts. And one of them is not even really an alert. It's just something to look at, something to be cognizant of. Uh, the the Cincinnati game, the Cincinnati uh, Bearcats are playing uh, the Tulane Green Wave. And I think this is an interesting game because Tulane, if you can remember, uh, pushed Oklahoma, just like everybody else they've played pretty much, to the very brink of that game. And then they've gone on to lay an egg, looks like to me. They've got a 1-6 and six record, I believe. And they'll be playing Cincinnati this week. Now, obviously they're not a good team. 1-6 and six, uh, conference. I don't even know what the – Conference USA is no more. I know that's what they used to be involved in. Uh, I'm a snob, obviously. I don't keep up with the goings-on uh, and the naming of those uh, lower-level conferences. But um, I think that's an interesting one to look at. Uh, if they pushed Oklahoma, maybe they'll be able to push Cincinnati. And also, it might give us a um, better idea of where Oklahoma is at. Uh, because they look like a bad football team that just might be uh, the beneficiary of a bad conference. And... Uh, that's another, obviously, Oklahoma every week is on upset alert because it seems like they just cannot seem to pull away and uh, step on the throat of their opponents the way a, a nationally elite college football playoff contender should be. But uh, So just uh, those two games, Oklahoma-Texas Tech, you know, this could be the week that they finally uh, can't pull it off. And then, uh, obviously, the Cincinnati-Tulane game, uh, interesting games to watch. Not going to make an upset pick in either one of those, but just upset alert and really more of just a game of interest in the Cincinnati Tulane game. Uh, now, moving on to the conference. Only got four conference games this week, uh, but they're all conference games, thank goodness. No no patsies in there this week to, to have to toy around with and watch, you know, some SEC cat play around with the poor little mouse all Saturday afternoon. Uh, starting up with uh, Missouri Vanderbilt. This is the bottom of the barrel bowl part two, uh, which Vanderbilt is always a part of. And I think that they will continue to uh, hold that that uh, title as the worst team in the conference. And uh, Missouri, who knows about this game? Could be low scoring, could be high scoring. Um, neither team does anything very well. So uh, whoever comes out that day, whichever unit uh it has a little bit of a spring in their step, whether it's the Missouri defense or the Vanderbilt offense or whatever will determine that, uh, whether it's high or low scoring. I'm going to go ahead and pick a score, uh, Missouri 31, Vanderbilt 21. Um, moving on to the, the big one, Georgia, Florida, the world's largest outdoor cocktail party, 230 CBS, Jacksonville, the way it always is, um, you know, obviously this week, since there's no Alabama game, I'm not going to go into any big in-depth predictions of games as to when scoring will occur and, you know, that sort of halftime scores and all that sort of business. But I am going to go a little bit more in-depth uh, for this next one because it deserves it. It's a big game. It's the biggest game of the year always in the SEC East, uh, ever, especially since Tennessee's been on their their slide here for the last several, several years um, but Georgia, you know, I've, I've said all year, I've been their biggest doubter. Um, this is one of those games where I think they've run into a team that will be able to score a little bit on their defense. Um, mainly because of, uh, AR, it's going to have to be Richardson, right? He's got, he, I mean, if Mullen has any sense, has any desire to remain, the, the head football coach at Florida, he's going to he's gonna start Richardson and stick with him, I think, all game. And I think that that's a talented kid, and I think that that's the kind of kid that has all the tools that can uh, give fits to a stellar, elite-level defense like Georgia has. And so look out for that. And so I hear that JT Daniels is going to be the starting quarterback, and this is going to be a prove-it game for him. Uh, if Florida pushes them and can score uh, some some points, then JT Daniels is going to have to figure out 
how to overcome that because I don't think Georgia's running game is, is quite as magnificent as it's been given credit for so far this season. And uh, I, I'm just going to call it – I think – I'm calling another upset. I know that I called Auburn over Georgia, and that uh, did not work out at all. But this is a different situation. Uh, this is – it's always different when it's teams that play each other for – you, the smallest, the the lowest level of, of of championships, like the East, you know, they're they they're always competing for that Eastern slot every year, and so this is like a championship game every year between these two, and they usually play like it. It's it's usually a very hard hitting, tough game. Uh, it's hard to predict, and a lot of times the underdog runs away with it. And the fact that it's in a neutral site makes it a, a little bit different of a situation. And, uh, yeah, I, I think Florida is going to pull the upset. I really do because I think this is one of those games that it, it, it can only go one of two ways. Either Georgia is going to blow them out or Florida is going to pull off the upset. I just don't see Florida making it close and not going ahead because, you know, they did that against Alabama. So it would be easy to pick a game like that. Like Florida's going to push them to the end and then lose the same way they did to Alabama. But uh, I, I don't think that's gonna gonna happen because I don't believe that Georgia will be able to give themselves the kind of cushion that Alabama was able to give themselves with the offense early, uh, and Georgia might find themselves in a close game in the second half against Florida, and they're not going to be able to hold them off with a 21 point lead the way Alabama did, and. Uh, so as far as scoring goes, obviously I think it's going to have to be low scoring in order for Florida to pull this upset off, and I think that it is going to be low scoring because I don't think Georgia can score a much more than 30 points against a decent offense. I mean, and they really haven't scored much more than 30 points against anyone other than just absolute garbage this year. So I, I, I'm going to go with a final score in this one of 31-28 Florida. Florida. 31, Georgia 28 in this ball game. Uh, and another giant game, maybe even bigger than the Florida Georgia game, really, is this Old Miss Auburn game. Um, because th there could be as m as much at stake, especially for Old Miss in this one, as any anybody playing anywhere in the country this week. Because, uh, like I said in the rankings video and the preview video, Old Miss is an Alabama misstep away from being in line for everything sec west sec national championship college football playoff obviously before uh that and so this is a huge huge week for them and it's one of those very just pick them kind of games Ole miss obviously has a better uh offense than auburn auburn has a better defense than Ole miss they both have dynamic quarterbacks matt corral is obviously a lot more consistently great than Bo Nix, but we've seen Bo Nix do amazing things at times, and uh, in, in the direst of situations, sometimes he can come up with uh, some pretty special moves for this Auburn team, but in this game, I think it comes down to Matt Corral. Matt Corral is the big driving force behind Ole Miss, and to me, the big driving force behind Auburn in this game is going to be Jordan-Hare Stadium, and can Matt Corral overcome the voodoo in Jordan-Hare Stadium. Everybody knows about it. Anybody that pays attention to SEC football closely knows that Jordan-Hare is top three. I think as far as when, when, when a program is doing well, they have a good football team on the field, the three venues in the SEC that are the toughest to play in are Jordan-Hare, The Swamp, uh, Ben Hill Griffin in Florida, and obviously Death Valley, LSU. Now, you know, Brian Denny's tougher than all of those places when Alabama has the best team, but some places, and everybody that's a college football fan knows this, some, you know, stadiums just have a better feel than others and have, you know, better retained sound better and all that sort of things. And those are the three in the SEC, in my opinion. And, and Ole Miss is going to have to be dealing with that this week, but I, I do believe that Matt Corral is going to be able to overcome this and outscore Auburn uh, the way they've done all season. And uh, I'm I'm very high on Auburn, and and I'm I'm, I'm having a hard time picking this one because, like I said, it's a toss up. But from what I've seen from Matt Corral so far this season, and I mean, let's remember that you know 
people remember them getting run out of Bryant Denny, but that final score was only 42 to 21. And if there hadn't been a completely overwhelming first half, a couple of panicky coaching calls by Lane Kiffin, that game could have gone a completely different way. And I just believe that I feel like Ole Miss is at a very high level this year, and they should be able to come out of Jordan Hare with a huge victory. As far as the score goes, uh, I think it's going to be high. I think it's going to be wild. Um, and, and I think it'll be something in the neighborhood of uh, Ole Miss 42 and Auburn 30. Let's go ahead and say Auburn 38. 42, Ole Miss, Auburn 38 in this one. And uh, the last game is a great game as well. Kentucky at Mississippi State. I think this is a very intriguing game. I've talked about Mike Leach all year long, about how he's the kind of uh, coach that can coach his teams to victories where they shouldn't have won. Obviously, he can also coach them to, to losses where they shouldn't have lost. And I think this is one of those situations where Kentucky, and, you know, obviously Vegas agrees with me because Kentucky is only a one-point uh, favor in the, in this game, favorite. And uh, that says a lot. And, and you know, Kentucky's just one of those teams. They've got, they're very solid on defense and they have uh, very stout, big lines, which is able, which is why they're able to, you know, beat Florida and compete somewhat with Georgia. And, uh, but... Mississippi State has a defense that is very underrated against competition that's uh, talent level that's kind of closer to its equal. Um, and I think that Kentucky is, you know, they don't have a very dynamic uh, offense. So this will be a low-scoring game, which I think is advantageous to Mike Leach because, you know, he can go three and out four times in a row and then all of a sudden – get a touchdown on three plays, you know, uh, which is very advantageous in a close game, you know, and Kentucky is the kind of team they've got to grind out the drives. That's the only way they can score very many plays running, you know, just grind, grind, grind. And, you know, Mississippi state has the capability to, you know, go over your head. And I know that they throw a lot of short routes and everything, possession throws but you know they're able to get it rolling quicker and you can expect them to be able to score out of nowhere uh anywhere on the field and you, you cannot expect that out of Kentucky so I do believe that Mississippi State's going to be able to score uh, uh an extra touchdown uh that'll be able to get them the victory and of course being at home is going to help them and I, I like Mississippi State in this one 28 to 24 and uh that's all I've got this week, folks. Uh, Alabama's got a bye week, so I'll be able to pay more attention to some of these games, and uh, we'll have a great review coming for you Sunday afterwards, and maybe I'll see you before then. Thank you.